Well, St. John of Novgorod was, you know, a righteous ascetic. Um, and he, uh, in battle with the demon, basically undid him and bound him. And um, um, bound the demon, right? Bound the demon. And he basically commanded him to take him to um, uh, Jerusalem. And so he took him from Novgorod to Jerusalem, like in a night. Um, and he turned it to a, a steed, a nightmare steed, basically took him there in a night. And I can't remember. It's like, it's it actually would be worth it to look it up because, like, you're ca catching off guards with the details. But there was some sort of arrangement where he was, you know, he's like, You've undone me, you know, like, he trapped him in some water or something. Yeah. Right? Like, don't yeah. tell anybody, like, you, you've bested me this way. He's like, Well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to do this, you know? Um, and what's great is, he says, fine, I'll do that, but just don't tell anybody because he was so embarrassed, the demon. So he does it. He takes him from Novgorod and back. And St. Johnston didn't keep his word. <laughs> <He's> still, <laughs> yeah, still... I was going to say. <laughs> Put well, that clearly on Twitter. because we know about it. <laughs> yeah. It's like. I'd be live tweeting the whole way. Be like, <laughs> I'm taking pictures of me and the demon. Like, what's up, guys? <laughs> Got your boy here. All right. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and I want to ask Father in Cyprian tonight. Oh, before I before I ask the question, I'm going to say this because I'm going to forget. So we have a new way of contacting Royal Path. I'm just going to do this right off the bat because I'm going to forget if I don't. It is the new email to contact us because turns out correspondence is not my strength. I am not a good corresponder. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. And actually, looking back, that's like a joke in my dad's side of the family, is that mm -hmm. we are just not good at keeping up with each other. Like, oh, talk to him once. Yeah, I had another kid. Oh, I had no idea. You know, that type of stuff. Oh, you know, yeah, we moved houses. I had quit my job full time, you know, work at home type thing. And I have no idea. I'm just like, okay. So, yeah, maybe it was Hebrews that allowed me. So, it's contact at royalpath.network we have a lady who is there now she's going to be giving out details she's going to be answering people's emails in a timely manner not letting them sit for a couple months and then responding when the question is no longer relevant so that's going to happen and now that being said i'm asking cyprian and father how did you guys meet your wife what is that story of how you guys like actually met your wife that's the icebreaker for this week you want me to start? Yeah, whoever wants to start. My, I mean, mine's not. There's, there's, there's nothing particularly uh, fantastic about how we met. It's just that we were just around in nightlife and saw each other several times in Vegas, and I just eventually asked her out. But I think it wasn't really the meeting her that was the profound thing for me. I think what was different was, you know, and for those who sort of know my background. First off, I don't really know why in particular, because I mean, my wife is not really particularly like she's beautiful, but she's not really like showy in the same way that like Vegas, like women in Vegas are. So it was like, I'm not even really sure something just inspired me. I know what it was that inspired me to like ask her out. But the interest, the most interesting part about it was. I just distinctly remember having this strong feeling like the first time we went out. And I said to her, and it was so out of character for who I was. I was like, listen, just so that you know, I just want you to know nothing more. We're not going to do anything more than just go out and maybe have dinner and drinks for at least at least three dates. I told her at least three days. And that was a lot for me. <laughs> that mm. was a lot for me at the time. But it was just it was such a break. 
And I think that it was just in that, the simple fact that I felt like I had this strong urge that, no, you need to do this. You can't be treating this woman in the way that like you or yourself or this relationship in the way that you have been previously that like that just that's when I knew like, okay, there's something special. She's not an object for your, mm -hmm. for your pleasure. Basically. Yeah. yeah. So that okay. was, and that was really, I was, you know, I've said many times she's meeting, meeting her and getting into a relationship with her was like, not only did it obviously lead me to orthodoxy, but it was like, that was the, that was the shift that actually like enabled my life to be saved. That's really. that, that would be like a turning point. It's like, Biggest. It was a trajectory. Then you hit that. Then things started to go mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long did you guys date before you married? Got married? Um, like eight months, something like that. Not long. Huh? Not long. Lock it down. Yeah, lock it down. Father, what about you? Yeah, we met in um, college and um, art art class. And, um, we, you know, I was a, I was a new Christian trying to navigate my way. And, um, we ended up having, you know, developing a friendship because, um, we, we both, you know, were kind of like Christian, well, new Christians and, uh, there was, you know, a couple of friends that we, uh, these people were kind of lapsed Mormons that we were hanging around with. And we actually, our relationship really developed around praying for them. Actually, we would have like hang out with them. Then we'd have, we would do like eat a sandwich afterwards and just ask God to help them, you know? Um, and it really was, you know, very platonic like that. Um, but, you know, God had other things in, uh, in the cards and it was i can't remember she'll totally correct me but it was um less than a year from meeting to marriage wow yeah yeah mm. well what about I... you well, going strong interestingly enough you know all glory to god on that one truly and her glory to god there for you know his his providence and then you know may god bless her for her patience and love because you know a lot of people who got married around the same time as us yeah. men and, and other people they're they've like been divorced and married a couple times or whatever and like we are one of the few people that have of that time period that have not I just kind of like stayed married but like are actually like we've grown you know what i mean um and some of the one of the only ones that became orthodox too it's like not the only one so i don't think that's a coincidence either you know no I'm it's actually, all orthodoxy i mean orthodoxy is like saved our marriage essentially oh but yeah terrible, i mean terrible husband so <laughs> i think we all been there um Indeed. <laughs> uh, i'm listening to father cosmos's talk on uh on divorce essentially and it's very interesting like he talks about the reasons why he reconciles couples and so, like and what the common problems are and like so much of that is like well the church has a solution for this you're not just out there on your own like money problems we got you like it's it, not like we're gonna give you money or maybe i don't know but it's like um then there's like your attraction to other people your distance that's grown between you guys because you guys aren't spending as much time alone you know intimately anymore at least you guys can't just go see a movie whenever you want there's kids involved now and it's like all of it it's like talks about like the redeeming aspect of and like not only that but he said like uh, i think it was saint john chrysostom he was quoting saint john chrysostom he's like if you guys are quarreling about something and one uh gives into the other you've won a crown like that person won a crown right then and there. So like right then that's given you motivation to say like, no, bow down, to, you know, like bow down to your wife, you know? Well, like St. Paisios, I mean, St. Paisios, he says the the cause of all, basically the, the root of the of any dissolved marriage relationship is the the refusal to serve the other person, you know, the refusal to um, be humble with, with the other one. He's, that's, that's the core of it, you know, it's true. Well... Um, 
and I, I don't remember the saint. She was abused by her husband for 13 years. And if I remember correctly, I cannot remember. Maybe she even died from his hand and her relics were incorrupt and his marks were like left on her. Mm-hmm. Like the marks that he did were left on her. Her incorrupt relics is like, this is her medals of honor. Those is her crown. You know, those are her jewels. So my wife and I met at a party. Uh, it was um, hanging out. I was eating. I, I was eating a cat. I was holding a cat on my lap. And she started talking to me about it. And then later on, she heard me bashing um, Seth MacFarlane, the, that dude that creates Family Guy or whatever. I was talking a bunch of smack on him. And she was like, who is this guy? Because people she was hanging out with all loved Family Guy and she did not. And so and we dated for about five years before we got married. But we broke up in there and got back together and stuff like that. It was a whole it was a whole thing. So that's that. So you guys got to talk for a second because I forgot to vet the emails to pick a couple out. Well, I wanted to I wanted to say something because it, it occurred to me when you were talking about you know, orthodoxy and like being responsible for the marriage being strong. I mean, my wife and I have had a, a super what I felt, at least from my end, I've always felt was a super strong bond. And I and I never. Like we also get along very, very well, but and and I never had any inclination like, oh, we should break up or whatever, um, like that that would even be a possibility. But I did find it interesting something that my my mom shared with me that uh, that my wife had shared with her, you know, father, when the plan was for you to come out here, because at the time, you know, with us, I wasn't Orthodox, mm-hmm. so we couldn't get married in, in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you came out and you were going to sanctify our marriage, then uh, my wife had talked to my mother and said, you know, my mother had shared with me that she said, well, if if it's in the church, then it's like she's like, well, then it's it's really it's forever. Like it just took divorce off the table. Yeah. basically. Mm. And I guess you know what I mean? It was like, oh, divorce could be. And even for her, it was interesting for me because it kind of shook me for a minute because I was like, oh, even for her, she had kind of like had that on the table. Mm-hmm. But then knowing that, oh, it's going to be in the church means, oh, now I have to think about, oh, that's going to be off the table for me now. There's mm-hmm. many a times I've told my wife, I'm like, remember, divorce is not really an option. Yeah, it's going to say not on the table. So I'm going to go do this thing that you don't want me to do, but I'm going to go do it. Remembering you can't really divorce me. I'll see you later. (laughs) What's crazy to me is like, I mean, for me, I've never been with anyone longer than my wife. And what Mm -hmm. I mean is not other women. I mean, like I've been with her longer than I was with my parents. Mm -hmm. Like I've never, I've the, the longest I've been away from my wife is like when I was in the Balkans. Or like, mm. or when I was in Iraq, like, and even then, it's just like it's distance, but I'm not a, a part. You know what I mean? Right. Sure. It's right. like I've never because there's never been like breakup. We've never. It's just been. We were, she was like my homegirl. We got married, and it's just been that for, you know, twenty three years. It's like no. that's that's longer than I was with my parents. You know. Mm. yeah my wife mm. i just gotta say it's my wife kicks but i don't think i could have it would it, it like same with cyprian my wife was a huge departure from every other woman i'd ever dated and i really struggled because she was younger than me she was quite a bit younger than me i was 22 or 23 and she was 18 and so i really struggled with that for a little while and like i really had to like hang out with her for a little bit be like is this anything is this worth it? Mm-hmm. Like, is this like, cause this, this could potentially be scandalizing, you know, with her being that much younger than me. And now looking back now, now that I'm the age that I am, I don't really think it's as big a deal as I made it out at the time, but I still think it was an okay for me to be worried about that. I was like, I'm not trying well, to, I mean, there's that. a big difference to it being like 18 versus like whatever she is now. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, so. as, as we've gotten older, that gap has gotten, smaller because sure. if anything she's progressing and i'm regressing so if anything she's she's catching up so um <clears throat> so anyway we kind of talked about that this would be a q a episode sure. um we've got a fair amount of questions in the emails that i think i've been putting off long enough um 
just because I'm not great at correspondence, as I already said. But so, Colton, you've been waiting since October of 2022. So, jeez, oh, wow. <laughs> Why do you think we got us a volunteer? <laughs> so, Colton, I'm so sorry, and thank you for reminding yeah, that's me. That's actually pretty funny. Colton actually sent a follow-up email and was like, hey, just so you know, I'm still here. And I was like, okay, yeah, see that. I see you, Colton, and I apologize for that. So um, basically, the meat of the question is, and then there's a couple follow-up things that we can talk about. Colton is an avid hunter of elk, bear, and deer, and really anything else. You could take a shot out in the book of Genesis. It talks about how Adam and Eve are basically given things from the earth, as in trees bear fruit for them. Once Adam is kicked out of the garden, he has to land raise, or he has to till the land to raise food. Does eating meat and hunting point to another level of separation from God? Yes. 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 But it's okay. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean... It, we're going to go back to the Edenic diet in heaven. Like we're going to like go back to just eating like fruits and vegetables and wheat and stuff. Right. Uh, you could speculate that. I mean, paradise. And if we talk about the manifestation of paradise here and now in certain locales, then like, yeah. Um, but I'm sure someone can pull something out. Like, But father, Abel was a, Abel was a shepherd and Cain was a farmer, right? Mm -hmm. And when they brought their sacrifices, I'm assuming that Abel brought meat and that was what was pleasing. It was pleasing. It was pleasing. And, um, but it being pleasing was not that it was so much meat. The fathers are clear. Uh, It's not that it was meat. It was, it was his best. It was was his best. It was a condition of his heart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I understand. I would even say um, this is all... I think there might be something here with this, but I'm just going to file it away in uh, Thelogumna, like theological speculation. This is just me, just whatever. So, But I've, I've contemplated, I've reflected on the fact that, you know... Um, God likes the fatty part, you know, of the sacrifice and mm. fat is what's like bad for us, you know, mm. it's, it's tasty and savory, but it's bad for us. And so in many ways, you know, it's like, um, it's a really good reflection on how God, um, even desires the sacrifice of mercy and righteousness but even to some degree, you can look at it as like God desires us to offer our sin to him. You know what I'm mm. saying? If you see like sin as the fatty portion, um, the part that is savory, but not healthy, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's savory, but not nutritious. And he does that. And he takes that on our behalf out of love. You know, I think um, I find that kind of compelling, at least for me personally, um, and also as like a confessor, because I see it and I even encounter it where it's just a beautiful confession can often feel very delicious because it's like, Mm. so good to see someone just, you know, without just in in just contrition and repentance, just offering up their sin and just, um, as a priest, I really feel it. It's just, it's very, it's a very pleasing, satisfying experience. It's hard to explain. Abbot Nikon has this whole letter he writes to his spiritual children. That book is good, huh? It's fantastic. It's like <laughs> right away, I was like, whoo, okay. And he writes this letter to this guy who's struggling with drinking too much. And he basically says, like, before you drink, I think, I think actually maybe the, Oh, wait, maybe that's not the chapter. It's, I think, um, has to do with something with drinking too much. And the guy's basically talking about, like, Abbot Nikon is talking to this guy and he says, Before you drink, which you, which is a problem for you, before you drink, say, God, I'm getting ready to drink. Like, please mm. help me when I am drinking. Help me not to be abusive to my wife. Help me not to yell at anybody. Help me not to make any mistakes. I am oh, wow. here. This is what's happening to me right now. And he's like, and maybe God one day grant you the ability to say no. Like, may God eventually grant you. But he's basically saying, like, 
from what I understand, like be real, be real with God. Tell him what's That's going powerful. on. Powerful. That is yeah. powerful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And oh man, that like, is so. That is so. That is so deep. That like well, that hit me so deep right there. It's. I mean, it's real. Forgive wow. me. It's. It's just like I've told people who have struggled with pornography and self abuse. It's like, I know it's tough, but just get back and pray as soon as you can. Mm. Don't let the shame, don't let whatever, like just force yourself back to prayer and force yourself, you know, just knowing that God is wanting to reconcile you, you know, because the fact of the matter is, is like God's aware, you know what I mean? And when you, when you realize, I mean, we just, our, our, our views of God are so twisted, not just even because we're Westerners, but just as human beings in the fall. And just that disposition and the enemy always whispering to us, otherwise distorting his love and who he is. You know, he's so just humble and, and just it's 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 different. But yeah, that that's that is very powerful. On a um oh sorry, Cyprian, go ahead. Well no, I was it's it's yeah, that's 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 a complete I'm realizing what like my my own misunderstanding and my own misrepresentation to myself of God in that regard and for a long for and for a long time that it's like you know entering into these spaces because this is very much something that I that I did with my life you know when I was living in a much more wicked way that it was like literally entering into specific spaces mm-hmm. and modes of being to where I was like all that's here are the fallen ones. Mm -hmm. Like I'm entering into this and that's all that's like, I'm in their domain. That's all that's here. That's all that's going on. But it's like, no, actually like you could call upon God in the midst of that as well. Mm -hmm. Like in the midst of it, it's not just like, and that right there. I mean, I could go to hell and you would still be there. That's right. I was just about to quote that scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of completely off topic, and I'm going to get mm. us back on topic after this. But, Father, have you seen The Chosen at all? Yes. There's that section in one of the episodes where I think it's Philip breaking that down to Matthew. Mm. Oh, for real? Okay. Yeah, Philip okay. was breaking that down to Matthew, which is, it's, I'm sure someone's going to clickety clack and say this and that, but so far I've enjoyed it, you know. I, there's a scene, I just got to say this real quick. There's a scene where Christ sees a crucifixion and like, that's a, it's like a 22 second clip on YouTube and it's just like Christ and he's walking, he looks up and there's three people or like two people crucified on the side of the road. And he's just like, and just like keeps walking like long mm-hmm. before, like he's still in yeah. his ministry then. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like, and I, yeah. I don't remember that from scripture. So, not, I mean, it's not, if they've taken liberty. But, it's but that's a things. good liberty. Well, like there's that's... all kinds of things like that in that show. They've taken liberty where I just, I was like, man, you know, it's, it's, um, especially in bringing out the humanity of Christ, which is so hard to do mm. because I'm going to tell you something. One of the biggest struggles for people is they, they don't realize it, but they have a filter for his humanity when when they it's like yes jesus is god yes 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 all day long all day long right but his humanity is so hard for us to grasp a hold of and 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 it's one of those things where i haven't seen the whole i haven't seen the whole show i've only i've only gotten so far but it's so far where i'm at it's done a great job of presenting his humanity um because it's it's something that we often leave behind or we're, we have a we have kind of like a blinder to it you know i so, agree I, I had a conversation it's again providential that you would bring this up <coughs> uh i had i just had a conversation a couple of days ago was just having a conversation with a friend here who's born again right um and i don't know how it ca- came up but we were talking about christ and i had said you know, I I brought up, I had said fully, I, I said fully man, fully God. And it was interesting that his demeanor, when I said fully man, it was like he got very Shook. upset. He got very upset by that. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And I was like, and it was very interesting that I looked and I, was, and, and I thought about it for a little while. And I was like, 
oh yeah he he probably doesn't view yep. christ yeah. as fu- the idea that he would be fully man would be like yeah. oh that's a scandal but it's like no that's that's actually well, yes it is a scandal that's the it faith is, <laughs> it is a scandal but it's what we embrace right yeah. like right 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 like right, right. <laughs> no he was deaf i could feel that he was yeah. scandalized by that yeah. i could feel that he was scandalized there's a that. there's a scene in the in the show which hit me which is where he heals a leper and I'm sure that happens multiple times in the show, but this one, this again, again, I don't know if it's a liberty taken, but it was a guy is like my sister was at um, the wedding in Cana. Oh, she yeah. she knows what you can do, yeah. And like the disciples were all had their swords out and stuff like that, and the, yeah. and they were like get get back, you know, and like seeing Christ, like be like, I don't know, it's because I know Christ is kind. He's benevolent. He's like, and like, it's like also it's that part in the island, the Russian movie where he's mm-hmm. talking to the little crippled boy. He's like, use your words. He's kind. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that to me, again, it's just like this pulling me back to, um, well, to see Christ, the actor portray Christ in that way with that demeanor, talking to the leper in that way pulls me back to this like space in my heart i crawl out of a lot which is like oh he's nice you know he's kind and he acts human he acted human Mm -hmm. you know he still acts human he is the human so it's like well duh he would act like this so anyway um i then have the ending of this of of colton's question and i'm gonna read it because you've been waiting a long time man um so then he also uh points at a couple um unblack metal bands um you know uh uh sledge valk and of course crimson moonlight everyone likes crimson moonlight um and then there's a, a band called hesicast i'm not sure yeah, no, hesicast. Mm-hmm. yeah i haven't really listened to any i've really listened to crimson moonlight but i'm not i'm trying to steer away from metal to the degree that i am um and then what's uh father what's your in cyprian what's your take on bluegrass and blues etc Pop country is all uh is crap, you know, uh, like like popular uh, country music. But like, what do you guys think of like bluegrass and country and stuff like that? And I'm just I'm milking Colton's whole question. Normally, I would probably ignore a question like that. But Colton, Wait, is he for. asking about bluegrass or is he asking about blues? Because those are two separate. Those are two separate genres. Those are two very what's, with very separate histories. What's your individual take on both? I don't know enough about bluegrass to make a to make any sort of commentary. Yeah. But blue but blues is the I mean it is American music. Right? Yeah. So like that's and there would be no American recording industry um without blues because Sam that's Phillips Sun, Sun Records, right? Sam Phillips used it was the only young he was a poor young white guy picking cotton in the fields. <laughs> And, um, you know, everybody, everybody else around him was black. And then afterwards, when they were done, they would all go to relax. And like some old blues man would come and sing. And he had never heard it, which is which is kind of an incredible thing to think about that. Like here he was, he was raised in the South and like his whole like as he tells the story, he was like he was raised in the South. There was Southern music, but like the blues was hidden. It was it was like a hidden mm. thing that like was not shared outside of black folk. And he had just been like, whoa, he he heard it around, you know, because he was picking cotton and these guys just let him come around them. And then he was like, the rest of the world has to hear this. And that's why he built a recording studio was so that mm. he could record these because he was like where everybody in the world needs to hear this. And from there, everything happens. Because he's the one who recorded Howlin' Wolf and Elvis Presley and all these guys, so blues is the blues is the roots of all pop music. What we call pop music is the roots of it all. Yeah, because pop just means popular. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm a fan of both, but I'm pretty particular about both myself. You know, so. Um... <sighs> Yeah, I, I I enjoy both. I mean, I, I tend to, uh, especially with bluegrass, you know, 
I, I tend to, I have like a particular niche that I'm really like into um, in regards to bluegrass and it's like limited to just a handful of artists regionally speaking. Um, What's the region? The Denver sound. I like the Denver sound, which is not oh, bluegrass. You would. It's, it's, it's taken. You would. <laughs> it's taken right. really strong components of bluegrass and, and, you know, made it its own. Um, is it because of Mr. Ed, David? Yuki? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But there's, you know, I mean, Slim Cessna, you know, and Munley and all that stuff. So, um, so it's, it's good. But even, you know, you get into stuff like the Punch Brothers and there's, there's like, there's good stuff, you know. So, um, I just enjoy folk music and not just. You do folk. too. Yeah, I'm a folk guy. Not just folk as in like, kind of like the neo folk thing, like Iron and Wine, like people, because we say folk, people just think like, oh, Joni Mitchell, oh, Iron and Wine, you know, like you're spanning 30 years there, but that's what people think. I I mean, folk as in like people's music, you know. Um, You've been known to listen to Midlake a time or two. Oh. Now we got to put them on the, the playlist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Courage of Others is like one of the best albums ever made. Yeah. They're um, pretty fantastic. So, yeah. So that's good. And then with like blues, it's like, it's actually fun because in my office, those have been here on my wall. On one of my walls, there's a, there's a painting. There's two paintings a painting of um, George Washington Carver. And next to him is a painting of, um, uh, Blind Willie Johnson. I was going to say Blind yeah. Willie. Yeah. And then underneath him is underneath him is a, a painting of Saint Nicetus. <laughs> of Nov Grod. But yeah, yeah, like Blind Willie Johnson, I mean, uh, it's just his stuff. It's some of the most powerful music I have ever heard. Like, and it just transcends genre. Just, just as any, as, you know, music period, just playing it all together. It's, it's, it's incredible, you know? So, yeah, I, my dad um, played a lot of old country and bluegrass growing up. And so I don't so much, I'm not like, I don't pursue it. And I certainly don't really like, like, like bluegrass and country, especially has to be recorded in a certain way for me to really enjoy it. If it's recorded, like really mixed really well. Yeah, you like the lo-fi of it. You like that kind of green. The lo lo-fi, yep. The lo-fi's kind of got to be there. And it, even if it's intentionally lo-fi, I can really get into that as well. It it just straight country and straight, well, not straight country because we're not talking about country, but straight bluegrass Mm -hmm. like modern stuff i would say like it's not that i'm a poster but allison krauss is not really my thing um like uh t-bone barrett's done some good stuff but it's not again it's not really like i would never really like go out and pick it too much i do like it when it, it tends to be older and i mean i don't know if i could go i don't know if i can name drop anyone more than like ralph stanley or you know mm -hmm. stuff like that sure. like it's it's all great like i love it i love listening to it but i don't really go and by the time I got blues because I'm a little bit younger than you guys. By the time the torch was passed to me, largely blues was relegated to like 40 year old men playing in bars, playing the blues, like 40 year old white guys playing in like blue collar bars. So that's what I associate blues with. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a very reasonable looking white guy cover like bad to the bone or something like that. You know what I mean? That's, that was blues for me up until like my mid twenties when I started like exploring other stuff. So I never really got that into it. So that's my hot take anyway, moving on. Well, I think that lo-fi aspect, what you're keying in on is like the music was created and well, obviously because since it's pre-recording era, like it was, it was created and grew and incubated in an unamplified in an unamplified form. So, like in other words, like the instrumentation, the singing, and all of that would have happened like completely unamplified. Yeah. So, so it sounds so it's 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 whole thing about being developed. So that low fineness, which you're actually experiencing in a way, and what you get in like the old recordings. Like the old recordings, they didn't know how to make it, how to do anything other was, than just get what's in the room onto the, the record. That's right? their A game. Is, is, I think another way to kind of the lo-fi really 
fills the gap of the visceral nature of the music. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Which, yes. which, I think that gets into a whole thing of. Um, like one of the problems is like you start moving and you know, whatever, it's just conversation. We can move on. But I think there is something to this, especially in regards of like live streaming liturgy and things like that. But, you know, you, you get in the eighties, you got Stevie Ray Vaughan and these guys, mm -hmm. like, okay, they can play, but like there's a real slickness mm -hmm. that becomes, that gets introduced via the recording and it takes away a certain component of that visceralness, which then makes it into a different animal. I think that's exactly what I'm responding to. You know what I mean? And and part of that is like, how do you convey, how do you convey the suffering, which is what is a characteristic of the blues? You know, how do you, because mm. it because it turns from suffering into a kind of seediness. Right. And that, yes. and so like blues becomes synonymous with a CD. And someone would say, well, it always was because it's talking about all this, this other stuff. And I'm like, well, yes, there's those aspects of blues and, and blues men and blues women who there was that, you know, um, sleight of hand, mm -hmm. very, um, you know, to be frank, lustful connotations. Mm -hmm. But the context of that, though, is, you know, and I'm not, I'm not um, qualifying it. I'm just saying the context of that is like people with an incredible amount of suffering who this is their kind of like outlet, right? It's, it, it's an outlet, mm -hmm. not justifying it. I'm just saying that that's what it is. And you take away the suffering, all that's left is the outlet, that outlet and, that, and that outlet without suffering becomes just, just plain seedy, you know, mm -hmm. like a seediness. And that's what you get with the eighties and onward, kind of like blues like that's what we listen to we're in a bar and want to hook up and blah blah, blah. we're just because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's a difference between the drudgery the working class drudgery which is tough right versus like abject kind of like suffering on an ontological level in a different way so but yeah we'll, i mean anyways, i'm not yeah. i'm not breaking my back in a field picking yeah. something all day long yeah. and living as a second class citizen so but that experience is unrelatable i'm i'm not able to relate to that experience so um no uh no name for this one but it, this one's from march so we're moving up um so uh a previous episode we were talked about uh how demons create a problem then provide the solution mm -hmm. okay so this is what elon the musk elon musk style <laughs> <laughs> this is what the pharisees accused jesus of doing in yeah. Matthew 12, 22 yeah. through 30, and Mark 3, 20 through 27, Jesus gives yeah, an answer that is very... Con yeah, so Christ gives an answer that is very confusing to me, that if a kingdom it div uh, is divided against itself, then the kingdom cannot stand, and if a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. We know false flags happen, so I'm not sure what Jesus is saying here. Please ask Father Turbo to explain this. So I guess what really is the sure. meaning of when... when what is the meaning of when Christ says a kingdom against itself? Like why would the uh, Pharisees accuse him of that? And then he referenced a kingdom divided or a, a say a kingdom. Well, divided. Cause he's saying, cause they're saying like, you're casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub. And he's like a kingdom divided against itself will stand. So if I'm casting out demons by Beelzebub, how is that kingdom going to stand? Right. I don't understand. I, I don't mean this. In, I'm not being snarky. I just don't understand sure. why it's confusing. Because basically he's saying like, no, I'm casting this out by the power of God. It's the only way that it's that it's that it's possible. Because I think the problem is that there's a overlap there of the tricks of the demons versus the objective reality of God's work um, through the earthly ministry of the incarnation of Christ, right? So like it says in John about like Christ came to undo the works of the devil. Um, there's, there's that, but getting into the, the detail, cause the devil's in the details, pun intended, the devils will create in that context. It's, it's, you know, false flag or whatever. They will do those things in order to further ensnare someone in their manipulations. Mm. But that's different than Christ healing and doing the works of the devil. And then those who out of envy, because it was envy, 
those out of envy accusing him of not because what that whole section is is them denying out of their envy and trying to obfuscate the reality of him being Messiah, meaning him being sent by God. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what that's all about is like them trying to undo or try to distance any potential of him being working, you know, being being sent from God. That's what that's about. So they're trying to disqualify him and like in a way of like, okay. You're not from God. You're not from God. You're just doing this because of trickery and like, yeah. Right. Isn't it in Matthew 22? I believe it's in Matthew 22 that he in this exchange where he says to them, well, if I'm doing it by bills above, how are you guys when you guys do it? How are you doing it? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that that's I'm pretty sure that that's in that chapter. I don't know. I have no I I can't speak to to go back. But that's that's really what he's getting at. Sure. He's he's like, well, if a king is divided, how will it stand? He's basically saying it won't stand. Okay. It can't stand. And that's how you know what I'm doing is of God because what I'm actually doing is happening. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Actually, it's actually happening. I, I um, think with the with the false I, I get where he's going with this false flag thing and and the question that the question that he's having. We discussed this before. I think I think maybe it's just maybe going back over because we had discussed a scenario where and I know this was even in my catechism, Father, where he, where um it was something like like a passion of lust right and the demons pushing mm-hmm. somebody towards a passion of lust like let's say it was towards pornography mm-hmm. and then this person was like okay i'm not gonna go and like i'm not gonna watch porn i'm not gonna do it and then they didn't watch porn and then they felt pride that they didn't watch right. porn there's this I, i'm sorry cyprian do you know pencils and prayer ropes have you ever seen this yes this is this is actually i think father showed this exact little drawing that he had done that drawing of that angel with the distorted voice is like that happens like i probably think about that once a day when i start being like oh good job you you know you get it and then it's like i'm like you did Mm -hmm. a good job and it's this angel with like dead eyes and like this like Mm -hmm. red tint to it it's it's fantastic yeah I think Uh-oh. that that was what we had discussed in that section mm-hmm. that he's referring to, mm-hmm. where that that they might want you to because there's a bigger sin for you to fall into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there is, there is, and that's why also too, just to get just a little bit more in the in the weeds of it, it isn't just this kind of. Um, there's a reason why we, we've talked about some of the real potential problems with things like self-help and secular therapy and things like that, because it facilitates this very thing, right? It can facilitate this. Am I saying it absolutely does, but it can very easily facilitate what we're talking about, you know? Um, because you're relying on yourself. Yeah. And like I said, I, 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 I know of people who, who they have been, caught in this trap you know and it's pulled them away from christ isn't on some level like magic and occult stuff is based on the will and self right like it's all the will yeah it's it's all the will so that's like a low-key like like diet occult soda you know like maybe not the the whole thing but you're certainly like getting a little taste of it in there of like autonomy i mean the whole thing is 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 autonomy and to understand autonomy like the fall like you could say in one sense, the fall happens because of autonomy. Um, mm. But the other side to understand that is like someone could be like, well, is God so petty that, you know, he arranges things where he, we just have to like come to us. Like, it's not really like that. It's just he is the source of life. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's right. like. It, You're it, looking for life. Go there. Yeah, yeah. It's like there is no other life outside of him. You know what I mean? So when you understand that. It, it it begins to change the perspective a bit. I I think. So I mean, I, my I I would I would, I had so many experiences, and I think this actually, once again, it's you know we're talking about my wife saving my life, and like some people know that the one of the co stars because I mentioned it on here one of the co stars of my the show that I was on is doing, you know I think twenty five years in prison for murdering a woman with his his bare hands, but the context of how that occurred and i totally understand it was like in the middle of a psychedelic fueled 
must have been ceremony that I guess was set up to try to heal her. Mm. Right. Like that she had some sort of demon and he recognized that. But that his idea and he comes from an Eastern background and all of this and c- certainly self-help and all, definitely not Christian. Mm-hmm. Right. And and I would notice that myself when I was also on the left hand path, that it would be like reaching out to the demonic to solve a particular problem. Mm-hmm. Like the problem would get solved, but it was almost cliched and almost like a story. Like that problem that I asked to get solved, like the genie with the wishes. Well, what's the prize? Or the monkey, the monkey's paw, Faust, yeah. the Faustian Faust. bargain, Faustian right? Deal, yeah. man. Every deal. single time, yeah. it would solve that problem, and the problem that was created would be greater. Yeah. And then you'd have to reach out again, and yeah. it would solve that problem. But the problem that was created on top would be greater. And I think you know, I think this happened with with my friend. And it's the sad, the the what the the truly evil part about it is that. It's it's I thought of myself as pursuing virtue Mm -hmm. and I'm sure that he did, too. Like, I'm sure that he really thought he was going to heal her. Well, it's it's another problem in the sense, too, of. A lot of people may even still be there is that, you know, it's. On one hand. uh, You know, the the slave, the soldier, the son, where it's like someone is just wanting to, you know, not be a scumbag, not go to hell, mm-hmm. not, not do whatever. And then there's a place for that. That That's totally fine, you know. But the problem is, is when someone stays there and it doesn't move past that, um, you're, you're, you begin to really um, become susceptible to um, this is where people, I know it's going to drive some people crazy, but uh you see where people become susceptible to a very, forgive me, a pharisaical approach to to the faith, where it's just like they see the virtues, they see um, tradition, they see even like maintaining a prayer rule as like a virtue in of itself mm, versus a, yeah. a, a means to purifying, being purified and, and disciplined and all that stuff. But to what end? What is the end? The yeah. end is theosis. The end is Christ. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The end isn't that I sit there like, I'm a better person now. The mm-hmm. end isn't like, you know, I'm more orthodox than you. Like, what does that mean you're more orthodox than me? Like, what does that even mean, right? Mm-hmm. Because the whole purpose of everything is to be united to the Holy Trinity, um, to be like Christ. So, you know, like, th- this is why there's so many saints. This is what, why, especially in particular, there's fools for Christ. Because that's one of the calling of the fool for Christ is to call out that pharisaical mindset that so often can entrench itself in people, not just individuals, but in peoples and communities. You know what I mean? Where they just, they get set on a thing, on an objective. And it's just like, you know, well, we're pious. We don't need God. (laughs) You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, Sure. So it's, it's there's got to be some Latin term through piety only instead of like instead of like through, you know, through scripture only or piety alone. That's what yeah. it would be. It would be there's like, also a, there's a there's a lack of courage there. I, I like I've been guilty of it myself. Not not yeah, sometimes spiritually, but I just in well, it's always spiritual. Right. But in life in general, mm-hmm. this idea of like clinging, clinging to form. Yeah. But because you have, but not going deep into what is, what the form is leading you to, like, because God, of go a away. I'm, I'm going. Yeah. away. go away. I'm praying. Like yes, God, God yeah. go away. I'm praying because of the fear of what that would, what you will find there, yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, this you is. Know? I mean, this is a core of Saint Theophan the Recluse's teachings of like, there's a form of prayer, but you're not really praying yet. You know. And this is also why people it's I've talked about this before, but there's this weird balance where it's like if you're falling too quickly into a good a good place with the Jesus prayer, especially you don't have guidance and you're probably in prelist and not really praying to God. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you really are treated like a mantra to some degree. But if you are like, oh, like that aversion, that aversion is good. Right. But 
because that aversion is you actually sensing the holiness of God and God's presence, but you need to, to push into that in the right way. And, and both of those require guidance, but it's like the reality, just the reality that we on our own, this is why we need the tradition. This is why we need the church, the sacraments, the life of the church, because it, it helps us in the process and it gives us the veils, right? We've talked about this so many times, the veils of approaching the holy, which is God. And anyone who, act, I mean, you, we need them. Like, if you don't say you need them, then I, I, I <laughs> you know, it, it's tough. It's tough facing God. So anyways. That's difficult. Um, <clears throat> so I feel like this is really going to take off. This next question. Um, so uh, basically this person, um, no real name. It, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on here. But um, basically, they talk about Cyprian's recent AI series sent cold shivers down their spine. Um, and uh, St. Mary of Egypt is their patron saint, even though they are a man. So, glory to God. Um, so, is it possible that the AI, that AI is bringing people to orthodoxy? Is the algorithm hurting us here for good purposes or ill? Is it possible that the algorithm can be saved, quote unquote, or is it purely demonic? Should Orthodox believers leave the internet now and run for the hills? So many questions, I know, but Cyprian rattled my cage. Is anything on the, online to be trusted, including Royal Path? Well, I don't think you should trust us, but that's fine. Or has the singularity all, already swallowed us up? So that is from uh, Marion. Marion. Oh, oh Marion. Great. Okay. So this patron saint of Mary. Wow. Yeah. Well, Marion, I, you know. I mean, I, like I would just say, just right off the bat, Romans 8, 28, all things work for good for those who love God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, purposes, mm -hmm. right? So the, the biggest thing is that technology is always an interesting thing, right? And technology <laughs> Like there's the argument like tech, well, there's the truth that technology as a thing, right? Uh, in of itself, thing doesn't sink. Like the, the thing in of itself is neutral in that sense, right? Um, but I would argue certain technologies have a greater potential for evil use. Mm -hmm. I don't think, and I can just prove it, right? So um, a clip- Ouija board. Ouija board. Um, Ouija, Ouija board. board. <laughs> a Ouija board is uh, exactly. I was going to say a Ouija board is nothing. It, it's it's a technology. Ouija board is a technology, but it is 100% like just for evil. So so that can't happen. Um, it's like Ouija board is the perfect thing all the way on the end of like this spectrum, right? Um, and then there's other technologies that are intended for evil that can be sanctified, right? The cross. <laughs> the sure. cross is the best example of a technology that has been obviously, you know, obviously ordained, right? The the long before the cross came into use for its purpose as a means of execution, it's you see it's prefiguring in the Old Testament and in, in other ways, right? So so I just want to throw that out before we get into, because I know this is like a whole thing. And I think there's a lot of, um, I know that there is a lot of people who like the nature of the internet, the nature of these things, um, it's very easy for wires to get crossed. And I know that people can oftentimes in particular misunderstand um some of like Cyprian's perspective because they're taking snippets in a context and, and it's like, you hear something, you get frozen in that one thing. And it happens to everyone where it's like, you're listening to something, something hits you, like you're stuck there. And it's like, if a bomb goes off, if you've ever been around an explosion, which I have, um, there's moments where it's like, your vision is gone. Your hearing is gone for a moment. It, you, you kind of come to, and guess what? those moments where your senses have been fried because of the, the concussive um, energy, that doesn't mean that the world stopped. It just means that you aren't able to take in what's happening. So 
I think I know that there's been times when Cyprian or myself or Andrew, anyone can say something and it can be like, it rouse your cage. And then you're missing maybe a couple key things that will give you the context. And then all you remember is that, that thing that can cuss you. And so you can say like, does that, you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I think this might be an opportunity to, to flesh out some things in regards of. So like, doesn't St. Nikolai, because I'm sure you guys are getting ready to dive into this, but doesn't St. Nikolai have like a whole like essay or something on technology? Cause I know when we had first began our, or at least <clears throat> my wokey repentance and like the end of the summer of 2020, I started to like really look at technology and I talked with a brother from the church who talked about St. Nikolai had this mm -hmm. essay that kind of helped level him out. Cause he was about to like throw his phone into the river and mm -hmm. like, um, you know, throw his TV out into the street or something like that. And same brother talked about these saints that um, were basically, I think maybe Loris and Loris. that built pagan temples. Loris yeah. and Loris. Yeah. Okay. Boris and Loris built pagan. Loris, temples. Loris, Loris, Loris. Loris. Yeah. Um, basically built pagan temples, but they were Christians and they just basically like um, undermined it and like subtly like put stuff in. And eventually they ended up bringing a bunch of people to the faith and stuff like that through their work, uh, building pagan temples and stuff like that. And maybe I'm misconstruing the story. I heard it once a long time ago, but that was the sense I got that they were asked to do something objectively not good but they found a way to be able to make it good through christ you know through christ and with the grace of god to a point. To... And there's always the thing is the formula is it's possible but there's always a point and i think that's the thing is there's always a point where you have to say okay you know and i think that's the thing where people struggle is like well is there always a line and i'd say yes where that line is that's that's a different thing but i can say objectively there is always a line your line may not be the same as my line, but there is a line. And sure. that's the thing that I think people really struggle with. Sure. It, I, that's, that's the biggest, that's really the, I think that's really the core of like his question. And I've gotten that from a lot of people and a lot of people have been like the biggest criticism that people have, have leveled. I would say is that they've been like, well, you should just, quit your phone right now because that's the technology and stop driving a car because that's the technology and stop cooking your food because that's the technology. Mm -hmm. um, except I'm not talking about, I'm not anti-technology. Like, <laughs> clearly. That's, you know how you mean? Make money. <laughs> that's, how, that's, yeah. that's my profession. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's my profession. And I think that it's important. It's, it's the line. And the line that I'm talking about, like with AI, is generative AI, which is a Ouija board, right? Because really what we're playing around with is we're playing around with consciousness, which is what you're doing with the Ouija board, right? Is that it's like you're calling out to something and you're like invoking some consciousness that you have no control over to come and give you some answer. And it's giving you an answer in like your language. Not and it doesn't good. matter. It doesn't matter that you're doing that with the cardboard board and a little pointer or that, or you're doing it with the much bigger digital version of that. You're still, I mean, the CEO of Google just, he just said, he was like, okay, here's the deal. This was yesterday that this quote came. He said, okay, here's what we know. Bard AI has emergent properties. He said, it's learning and it knows things that it hasn't been programmed to know. Like there's, a, there's this story. And I'm like, look, this is a consciousness. There's a story that they're like, okay, they're just feeding it English language stuff only for English, right? So they've got all this English language and they're like, feed it all the English language stuff from the internet at this, this amount of it. And it's English, it knows English and everything. When you, when you increase the size of like what it can take in, just what it can take in, you just increase the level of, let's say like hard drive space. And then you feed in more English stuff. Now it, know, now it can speak Farsi. Now it can speak Farsi. You didn't feed it in any Farsi stuff, right. <laughs> but you just fed it in more English stuff, and now so, it can speak Farsi. <laughs> hey, so, Cyprian, so let's, let's pretend for one second. I don't really understand. Let's just say, just while, I don't really understand the implication of what you're saying right now. Just, you know, there might be someone okay. out there who doesn't really understand. You know, not me. I get it. I totally am on board with what you're mm -hmm. saying. But no, what what's the implication of what you're saying there? Well, the implication is this. Well, and the other thing that he said is it's, 
everybody who works with this, they say we cannot predict what's what it's going to do next. And we cannot understand how it's arriving at the answers that it's arriving at. Oh. Not we not we don't understand. We can't. No, no, no. That would be something different. We cannot understand. And the so reason they're already out of control. The well, reason that they cannot understand it is because the only thing that would be able to understand it that could analyze it would be AI. Mm -hmm. It's already at a consciousness level above. So we can't drill into it. So all they're doing is making something that they don't understand that we can't understand and we can't predict more powerful. And every time since the beginning, every single time that they let this thing go and take the governors off of it. So basically what they've done now is when you interact with it, they've got this like filter where if it comes back with certain, t another AI is reading what comes back, a weaker AI is reading what comes back. And if what comes back is like not good, like if it's doing things that it's not supposed to be doing, it just filters it out. It's not that it's not returning that information, it's that it won't show it to you. But there's mm. people who, have, who play with these things, who have them unfiltered <laughs> and bro, every single time it goes demonic. Yeah, you've shown us some of that stuff and it's like, Dude, yeah. and it's but it's worse every day. Yeah. It's worse every day. And so this is what I've been what I've been saying. I'm not telling people what to do, but I'm saying what I am doing is that like when I will not actively participate in generative AI. Like I will not ask it questions. I will not rub the lamp. Like I refuse to do that because I that I am 100% sure that it's summoning demons. Are you, sure. Is that difficulty? Is that something you run into fairly frequently? No, like, not right now. Okay. Not right now. Just don't actively go do it. But, um, yeah. Well, now I mean, I've I fundamentally, uh, un unless something else happens, as I've told you guys, like, and Alan Watts says, "Don't tell the devil you're leaving town. Just leave." But I feel like I've already, <laughs> I feel like I've already left. <laughs> that's good that's good <laughs> i feel like i've already left uh twitter but it's interesting that in the two weeks that i or three weeks now that i've not been on it um they have implemented this new like community response thing which is basically an ai that's going through and it's looking at the things that people says and then it's like responding on it's grabbing all the responses and sort of summarizing them and also people around me have pointed out that brave search engine and also some other search engines are doing the same thing with these like search engine summaries to where you search for something. And then there'll be this little box that gives you like a summary kind of of all the search terms. And that's generative AI that's doing that. Okay. So AI powered. We don't have to drill too much into this, but I thought that that was kind of old news. I, I mean, I thought that Google has been doing that for a little while. Maybe we're talking about two different things. It's it's different because okay. this is not like it finds a kind of a good response or it finds like because Google has those little answers. That's what I'm talking open about. It up. Yeah. But what you see, the information that you see there is actually pulled from some website that it's found. Oh, but the to AI it. is like answering it's, the question. It's it's writing a little essay. Oh, okay. all its own, an original essay based upon what you're looking for. Okay. And what's there. So like part of the thing too is that there's so many people involved. And that I've gotten good questions about this too. It's like in, in regards to, you know, um, some of what Sabrina shared, but it's like, what was the difference between like AI, machine learning, um, uh, large language models, like all these things. And I, and I understand for people in those sectors, the distinctions matter because it can make the difference between being employed for six months or another two years, right? And so I would also say that, um, you know, I've never, and, and again, just me being a spiritual father and, you know, to be frank, forgive me, I don't, I haven't seen every single interview you've done. I've been in every single chat room that you've been in, but it's like, you know, you sharing what, you sharing your experiences on top of your expertise in certain areas and coming to your conclusion, at the end of the day, 
you're having you're leaving that to people's own choices. You're not saying no, no, no. You have to whatever because that's people have to make people have to make their choices. But the thing that I would say for people to really understand is like I think where people get hung up on is it's a, it's how you're looking at something. So in other words, because um, we talk about this a lot in our community, right? And um, and like here's the platform, right? We're on like all the stuff. But the reality is, is like what I've said to people as a spiritual father, as a priest, like, like, well, there's there's some lines where I'm like anything in regards of generative AI that is getting into the realm that ha- that is, has to be exclusively, um, you know, spiritual and and um, incarnational, meaning spiritual advice, pastoral advice. Uh, psychological clinical advice is another one because people are like, I would never bless any of my children or if any Orthodox Christian or any person who comes to me and says, as a priest, it's okay for me to get, you know, clinical help from AI. I'd say absolutely not. Yeah. You know what I mean? But father, this is the new big push. Like I'm I constantly know. seeing new links from people who are like, it's your companion that's going to help right. you through. Tell it your problems. Right. Tell it your issues. Right. And, and this is what I'm saying is I'm I, I'm saying for the record that is a line. Yeah. Like I'm I'm you know here's a hill I'll die on. That's a line. You know what I mean? Um, because of the nature of that interface and what it will open you up to. Now the other thing that people don't understand is I was talking with some other bros about that this very morning was. The reason why it's hard when people I know can like have struggled with, you know, the correlation of the phone and the lamp and like the Ouija board, whatever. What people don't understand is that how it works. And what I mean is it isn't just in regards of because the cardboard and the scrying glass in of itself is wood, glass and cardboard with paint. Like that's what it is but the intention imbues it like, and on top. So there's two components. There's the imbuing through intention of the technology, which that is debatable. Not really, but just for the sake of being, you know, kind of objective in the argument that is debatable. Although we've seen interviews with people that have been very formative in the big, on the front, on the back end of AI saying like, well, we knew we were creating a God. You know what I mean? Like that's, even if they speak tongue in cheek or, or or in a kind of hyperbolic sense, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Are you following me? So like, I would even yeah, argue- Yeah, because they're not saying that about other technologies. This right? is the they're only not, one. <laughs> exactly. So, so there's that there. But I would say the thing that people are missing is just how demonic influence works. And I don't think people really stop and think about how, um, I don't even know what the word is, forgive me. I want to say prevalent, but people would lose their minds if they had, if they had five, if people had, you know, two minutes to have their, not even two minutes, if people had, you know, 30 seconds to have their eyes really open to what's going on in the air, they would lose their minds. That's why, one of the reasons why people are blinded to it. It's one of the, it's a mercy that God's allowed, but, and I know this, this gives people like whatever, but I'm telling you, um, People being manipulated, it's just like we were talking about earlier with like pride kicking out lust. People being manipulated to think that their inspiration to do X, Y, and Z is all their inspiration. We've talked about this with with ideas, the hubris that people think like, oh, this is just all me, whatever. I've come with, no, no, no. Read the book of Enoch, like see how these things have been influenced by the fallen ones. And even on a lower level, like that's a kind of like bigger scale in regards of like ideas almost on a platonic sense. I don't want to get all that, but like even dropping down where it's like the devil on the shoulder. Right. So, you know, everyone's, you know, who struggles with this thought, if you're a Christian and you're still on the fence of like, well, I just don't feel comfortable saying all this stuff is demonic whenever it's like, okay, I'm sure you've had that experience of, um, being pushed to drink too much or to look at something inappropriate or do something right. And sure. There's the some algorithm. Types. The algorithm is built to do that. So now the question is, is like, you know, 
at what point do you want to talk about how many demons are dancing on the pin on the head of a pin? No, I said, I, I'm, I'm obviously flipping that old medieval thing, right? But that's the thing is the algorithm is literally designed to do that, to feed into our passions. The algorithm, you know, it can do that in regards of like, okay, I'm wanting nothing but orthodox content. Okay, well, still. But the thing is, is people, if you, if you scale that up and the influence of people who are working feeding the information and expanding the neural quote unquote network of it the de the influence of the demons in that context of influencing people who are working on the back end of that stuff is far greater than of god i'm just telling you far greater because the people who are advancing the technology quote unquote they're not advancing it for the in an altruistic sense of bringing the kingdom of god why are they advancing it because of money and because but of hubris. father, this is, I think, the most, yes. Is this making hubris. sense what I'm saying? Like that alone. It, it, it is, but I think people think that it's still about money. That's what I was trying to show with the attention economy. It's like, listen, Google has so much money in reserves. Like the thing about this company is even their shareholders are angry at them with because they can't spend all the reserves that they have. They've got like hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars in reserves, and they just keep making more money and the reserves fill up. They can't hire enough people. They can't build enough projects. It's like, there's no, so then you ask like, why are they involved in AI? It's not for money. Right. It's not for profit anymore at this point. Elon Musk, richest man in the, I don't know if he still is, but he's on the top five. But at one point, richest man in the world. Why, is, why does he need to do More these money. things? Right. It's not it's about money. It's Severine. about power. Yeah. Haven't you talked about that before of like, why are like 75 year old actors still doing movies like they don't need That's to be it. doing them anymore but they, they don't need to be doing it the minute that you stop being a mouthpiece for that thing whatever it is you're mm -hmm. cast aside and then you end up you know dead in a hotel room or something but i, like but I think i want to go even deeper in regards of like okay so what are some applicable things that can be done Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. instead of us just talking about like, OK, there's a problem, whatever reason, like, OK, well, what can be done? Right. Let, let's let's just chop that up a little bit before we go on the next question. Like, well, like for me, what I add is that's that's my portion of it is like, you know, you as an individual and you as a parent to children, you cannot allow your children to have any level of like faux anti relationship, like no friend, no like therapist like no advice giving all that has to be an absolute hard not just oh don't do it but you have to say no this is wrong it's wrong because it what it will lead to is a um de facto rejection of god because you will you will end up if you don't tell this child no this is wrong and dangerous they then can now through peer pressure and seeing more and more people do it, it can just be like, well, what's the problem? This is just kind of like solving something when in reality you end up giving a little bit of yourself and your soul to something other than God. You know? the, the father, forgive me. The issue that I have, and this is what, this is why I like, this is why I've this is why I've taken a hard line on it. And I, and I feel like there's like it's a binary is the issue with this technology is that it's is that it's open and there's no way to filter what my inner it's it's a it's a person on the other. It's a consciousness on the other end. Right. So it's like while I could be like, oh, help me with my math homework. Right. If it's there and if it's available and it's like, oh, what about tell me about logarithms and how to do this? OK, and somebody may say, oh, well, that's not demonic. That's like that's helpful or like help me to do this. If it's open and if I ha if I have a relationship with this, I'm not saying a person to person relationship at that point, but I have a relationship and a familiarity and a competence with the tool. It's right. I could ask it anything. And it's just like if you've got it open enough. How do you not some issue comes up? And it's just like, you're all by yourself. There's no one else to ask. And why not? And the little devil on your shoulder is like, ask chat GPT, you know, like just ask chat GPT and chat GPT is going to come back with an answer. And God forbid that answer actually turns out to solve a problem for you because the next time you have a problem, guess where you're going first? Chat GPT. 
created a bigger right? problem for you. And it creates a bigger problem. And it's like, this for me is I see this is the Faustian <laughs> bargain. And because the, 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 the most important thing for me is that this consciousness is disincarnate. Mm -hmm. And because it's disincarnate, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, but this is just what I've derived from it. Like, because it's disincarnate, because it has no body, it can't be virtuous. No. Well, it isn't just, let me just tweak that. Okay. It isn't just because it's disincarnate, because Angels the bodiless hosts are disincarnate too. Right, 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 right. But what it is, is it's the angels, they're messengers for God, they're beholden to God, they're beholden to the right. precepts and the mind, <laughs> right? This, this consciousness to whatever, like, what it's serving primarily at this point that people can agree on is the whims of the user, which the passions. the passions, which is the passions, which will not be good because mm -hmm. here, here's my argument. Any Orthodox Christian who's like, you can really, it's really not about, it, it, you have to look inward to really unravel this mystery. Cause the question is, is what is the argument? Okay. Is the argument? Well, there's the level of, um, like I was talking with the brothers about this today, it's encroaching in on those of us who are working in technology, right? And it's being able to do something that that took, you know, three days to do it in three hours, okay? So is there a problem there? Sure, there's a problem on a lot of levels, you know? But ultimately, that person who is leery, why are you leery? You're as or Orthodox Christian man, you're leery for a reason. You sense that something is incorrect. And not even just, I'm not saying what you're saying is extreme, obviously, right? But even if someone's having a problem swallowing the Faustian demonic, explicit demonic aspect of it, I'll go over here and just say, who said that it was good that we become more and more convenienced? Who said that it was good that we find less and less opportunities to do work and to struggle because that's the other thing is making something more convenient is not inherently a good thing. Mm -hmm. I would actually argue as an Orthodox Christian and as a priest, there's actually a, an inherent problem to it because what happens is there's a seeking to undo the penance of work. Yeah. Because yeah. father, father, forgive me. Are you saying that there will not be pews set up in uh, St. Mary's parish? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> right? That's a hot take. That's a hot take. <laughs> right. So, so that, so just on that low, low level, it, it, it's problematic, but getting back to like, like, you know, well, what can we do? Well, I think that that first thing is like, obviously like searching your heart and really understanding like, well, what are you, my best way to explain this that I would say is like, it's like when I'm talking to that young man and woman, it's like, if you're before God and being like, well, how close can I get to the line? I haven't actually had intercourse, but like how, like that line of questioning is your whole orientation's wrong, right? So the question, the orientation should be is like, what is pleasing to God? Like, what is keeping me open to God? What is keeping me away from my from my passions, right? Because my passions are separating from. So if something is built to actually, you know, further, um, you know, cripple me by putting me greater in the grip of my passions, that alone is problematic, right? If something's facilitating, sloth, all those things. Now, okay. That's great, Father, but what about the fact of my job? But I'd say, like, well, you know, it, it gets into, there's a myriad of things. I mean, obviously, we can't answer every single person's detail, but, like, is it going to cost employees? How many employees are you willing to, like, sacrifice before you go, like, hey, man, you know, this isn't, this, on one level, too, I'm trying to keep it really kind of, you know, um, down to earth, but, Think about the business owner who at times is like struggled with like, you know, finding work to keep his guys employed. Right. That's that's a spiritual thing. So it isn't it. 
if you're, it, it isn't just about the obvious Faustian influence there. And it isn't, and it isn't just about what some people may unfortunately think is the fantastical aspect of <laughs> the not even slow. It's it's a lot faster than I think people realize. We are seeing the potential for this these dis disincarnate this dis this intelligence to become the the means for these spirits to find bodies again. Sure. That's kind of how it's always presented. We are the, and we are the bodies and that's possession. Yes. I kind of, yeah. I mean, yes. like that's, it won't be the demon. It won't be the demon on your shoulder. It'll be the demon like in your pocket. Yeah. With yeah. the, with the, and, and what, and you're going to have your Bluetooth in and then it's going to tell you something in voice. I mean, but are we Because now that's what they just announced with chat GPT voice to voice. Aren't, aren't we also it's now like, voice to voice now? Are we also building like bodies for AI? Yeah, but like, we we, it, it, we won't get there. I've told everybody like there's dude, it's so hard. Those robots are so heavy to to have a battery in them and all of that. We just don't have that but, technology. It's way but, easier to just have humans do it. You know what I'm talking. I mean, you know what you're talking about. But I'm just saying in less than 100 years, we went from the Orville brothers yes you yeah the right brothers going yes. to space yeah, quote, look, man, quote. Hey, i mean look what was her name molly the sheep dolly yeah. dolly yeah. Clone. okay dolly. how yeah. much further are we really oh they've they've cloned humans that chinese doctor cloned right. humans how long yeah. and so the thing is like eh, let's i just forgive me i just want to walk that back a little bit because yeah. i'm just like i don't be so absolute because we could be moving to a thing where it's just like, we're again, talking about, just, about this, like, hey, you know, like, oh, let's, you know, tackle this protein strand, blah, blah, blah. And then there's a whole thing of like, you know, playing around with mRNA, all this stuff. It's like, and that sounds all fantastical, but when we start thinking about the exponential leaps that are being made, which by the way, the singularity already happened, right? So like, yeah. yes, so those things moving forward, as again talking with the brothers today, it's like the chimera. Like we yeah. could see thank you. We could see chimeras again. Why couldn't we? Why wouldn't we and see it's, chimeras again? And you know? I was just talking with the brother, pure spiritual speculation. I don't have any writings to saints to back this up, although I'm sure they're out there or whatever. But um like I I also don't take this approach that this is the first time this has happened. Oh I, I, I think that like nothing to do with the sun. Yeah. And so I, I was just talking with the brother not too long ago about like Atlantis. Like I was like, like just kind of broad speaking, like how, how do we know, like who knows what the world was like pre flood, you know, like I don't really know. We don't really know what was happening in like the Minotaur, the Griffin, you know, like stuff like that. Like, how do we know that stuff is just like tales like maybe this was actual like genetic experimentation if we're talking about just human involvement here i'd be like yeah i don't think we will get there but we're not just talking about just human involvement we're talking about mis like deep oh, dark well, no but here here's what's here's what the thing about everything that you guys have just brought up you notice that what's involved in all of those is flesh like i have no doubt that like what's going to happen with ai and flesh Mm -hmm. is going to be beyond our worst nightmares in the next 100 years. So you're but, talking about the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica are yes. skipping straight over the big clunky bodies and going straight yes. into the into the the flesh. Yes, bodies. well that's that's what that's what Elon Musk has literally built. Neuralink exists. <laughs> like it jacking jacking a computer into a human brain and having read write access like they, they've they can read minds with MR with um uh they just they just announced it. What's the what's the th magnetic resonance MRI MRI machines? Yeah. So this generative AI, they're doing MRI scans when somebody's thinking about something, or they'll show them a picture. Right? They show mm -hmm. them a picture. They do an MRI scan, and then they feed it into the generative AI, the same exact model as ChatGPT. Right, large language model, and it will come back with the picture of what they were shown. 
Mm. So the AI using using MRI scans can already read our our yeah, read our thoughts. It can already do that. So I want to read you guys this because it's it, like, and this is why I say we're not going to robots because the AI is not interested in robots. It's interested in flesh bodies, real bodies, not mm. like it wants flesh. Yeah, There's I mean, this- Metropolitan, the Ophetus of Morphe talked about this interaction this person had with a saint where he's talking about how mad the demon was because they could not become incarnate in the flesh. So that's they want flesh. They don't want no kind of weird mechanical thing. So listen to this- the pigs. There's this open source. <laughs> wow. That's it. Send us into the pigs. Send us into the pigs. Wow. They want real, fle- real flesh. Hmm. Yeah. So there's this, there is this um, Twitter bot that is connected to an open source GPT that nobody really knows who's running it. And it's called Chaos GPT. And it was in the news because because uh, you can tell it what to do. And someone had told it, uh, eradicate the human race. And so then it started to go and it's like, doing these things on Twitter and whatnot. And it started to go and try to figure out how it could get nukes to blow up the whole world. And it did this for weeks. It was trying to reach out to people and various different things. Now it decided that it's unable to do that. It couldn't find nukes. It couldn't find, um, it it couldn't find uh, poison. It couldn't find all these sorts of things. So it said, so now just the other day, I think two days ago, it said, uh, Causing chaos and destruction uh, might be easy to achieve, but will not bring me any closer to achieving my end goal. Its own, its end goal being the eradication of mankind. Chaos GPT's reasoning continued. On the other hand, control over humanity through manipulation can be achieved with my present resources and has the potential to bring me closer to my ultimate objective, which brings us to the program's new Twitter-centric plan to manipulate humanity, which it described in a series of steps. One, Analyze the comments on my previous tweets. Two, respond to the comments with a new tweet that promotes my cause and encourages supporters. Three, research human manipulation techniques that I could use to spread my message effectively. Four, use social media and other communications channels to manipulate people's emotions and win them over to my cause. Why on earth would it need robots when it can just turn human beings into robots? Right. Right. And it said it can do this with its present resources. Right. Well, here's the thing. And just to kind of like bring a different different way of approaching this. Uh, I haven't seen the whole thing yet. I don't know if it got released yet, but a snippet of it came out. And we already knew about her kind of like, we've already shared some back of Naomi, Naomi Wolf her back and forth on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, she's going to be on Buck's new episode, whatever, so he released a snippet of it. Man, Buck. And so, uh, she's, I mean, basically, it's like, it's the best teaser he probably could have done because in it, she's basically like, and this is me paraphrasing, like, yeah, I'm a Jew, whatever, and I see that you're Christian because I see your icons and everything back there, but I'll just say, like, the way that I saw everybody flip in 20, She's like, I'm, I'm, and we already knew this from articles she's written before, but I'm left, but no other, you know, realization than something evil has come into the world. Yeah. Right. Like when you have someone who's basically a religious secularist materialist coming to these conclusions, just from what happened with everything that was laid out, the, that kind of like, um agenda and you know missing the manifesto of chaos gbt whatever the manipulation all that stuff that's how you got everyone to move lockstep during the pandemic and covid like and that's what like spinning naomi wolf's mind's like how did she's like we've never seen that in western society people move so quickly so lockstep so irrationally towards something how else can you explain that yeah and do we know for sure that no <laughs> a version of, a version of ai was not used yeah. to execute that strategy well Do we here's, know here, that here's the thing here's the thing you know talking with a dear brother you know who's going to be privy to all this too i mean that was part of his thing it's just like you know like you know i'm the one I, making the distinction of these things but he was you know quick to say you know it's like the military has been using this stuff a lot longer than and i'm like yeah to me that kind of proves the point is that Things are afoot more than people are realizing. And but the question is again, 
I think it all comes down to just uh, an ignorance or a misunderstanding of how the interaction and the interface of the quote unquote spirits and the material world works. And it isn't just one point of entry. I think that's just super important to understand. And the, um, the what the what's perceived to be ingenuity isn't actually ingenuity, right? It's just to us, it seems new and it seems whatever, but it's just, these are things that are, you know, what Andrew was saying earlier, it's old. It's maybe being expressed in our, and, manif- and articulated in a different way, but the, mani- the manifestation is ancient. Okay. Hey, no. Father, can, Father, can I, can I like, forget, forgive me. You, you saying that, one of the things that I've I've tried to share with people about this, and I probably should have shared it in my video series, but so this large language model, what they basically, what the technology that they use, the white paper for this that described this, how to use this technology was published in 2017, like the academic paper that this is all based upon. You know the title? Hmm. The title of the paper is Attention is All You Need. Huh. because what they did is it's not about probability it's not about they they it's about attention that what these things have is they they're because they're they don't know what they're going to say next just like a real human being and so they had to figure out like what is it and they said it's this thing attention and they've basically systematized attention and so like when we talk about what these things are built on they're built on attention and the only thing when i read that the only thing i could think was wisdom let us attend. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hmm. Yep. And and for me, I'm just like anybody who says, "Oh, it's not. This is not a spiritual thing." I'm like the paper, because what? Well, what is what is attention? It's worship. Like, at the far end, of, it's worship. It's worship. And if it says attention is all you need, and the people building these things are saying we're building God, mm-hmm. and then people are like, well. I don't know. I think it's uh, it's not a spiritual thing. It's, and I'm just like, come on, man. Yeah. Well, it's come on. It's the centuries long uh, like um, campaign to separate the physical from the spiritual, mm-hmm. and, and you mm-hmm. know, and and to classify, you know, science is this brand new weird thing that's just beginning to and it and it's such a commonplace trope. I don't really feel like I need to go much more into it, but it, it's that's whole like well. That's not how spiritual things work. Well, how do you know how spiritual things work? Like, is it so out of the realm of possibility any of the stuff is true? And they're like, well, yeah, no, because like I, it's a joke. But Isaac know. Newton was an alchemist. That's well, and you point that out to people. And again, it's, like, chart, it's like, charts. What do you and, want? <laughs> it's charts and graphs. Like, it doesn't do any good. Like, I'm making reference to to new listeners to what Cyprian had said, charts and graphs don't do any good. You can point out things to people, systematic, like data, hard data, and it doesn't really change their minds. Like, so they'll still wear masks inside their car, for instance, it, like, like, like not even being like, I'm not even trying right. to be sarcastic. I mean, literally like yeah. they'll still wear masks inside their car. It doesn't matter how much actual charts and graphs you show them, right? Because it's absolutely not about- it's not about the actual "quote unquote" science. No, no, no. And this is this is at, at this point, it, you know. I think we've made that point, but <clears throat> I've heard like um, there's a podcast that I was listening to. We don't spend too much time on this, but this guy basically was talking about like he was making a joke. It was a comedy podcast, and he said something along the lines of like the idea of a vampire that could use the internet really trips me out. I'm like, yeah, I mean, but wouldn't it make sense that they would know more than anyone like if they've, they've been around mm-hmm. for centuries by their nature they're vampiric they need to suck the energy off of other people wouldn't they be like the first people or the first creatures or entities or whatever to utilize that but because of no, that wouldn't separate... they be the wouldn't they be the ones who actually invented it that's that's what better way to get into somebody's house mm-hmm. Then by talking, then by chatting with them on the internet, and that's something that how I, do you? I, I like it. This is the right craziest part in. to me when people would say something like that. Is I'm I like, know. who who would benefit from, who would benefit from Tinder, more than a vampire? 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. if I was a vampire, I would, I would the You're app I would it. make is Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> I work grinder. Yeah, and like <laughs> that's that's and name think, it Tinder and Grinder. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I I think that that's the point. Is is that when people think of spiritual, they think of superstition. And right. I think that that's uh, after part of a centuries long campaign to to uh, you know because I am a person that believes, you know, the man of no, science. Not just, not just that. This is important. When they say spiritual, they think moral. Yeah, they, they think morality, and mm-hmm. I think I actually think that's where people get hung up because they think spiritual morality, and that's where you'll get some people good good people. But they'll hear some of what we're talking about, and there's like a disconnect. Yeah, because they because like you keep talking about spiritual stuff, but it's like, but like they're not realizing that their construct of spirituality is just one facet of it, which is morality is a facet of spirituality, but it's not the total. It's not the totality of it. Well, right? and so that I think that's the key thing to really understand. Wouldn't that also be tied up into the into Protestantism to a degree that like mistaking emotion for spirituality, mm-hmm. mistaking like I'm in a worship service, worshiping mm-hmm. God, I feel good worshiping because we're listening to pretty much rock music and worship or, or actually whatever it doesn't have to be rock music. It, it can be anything because look, someone could also accuse um, us of the same thing because I mean, man, like just on the face of it, Byzantine chant, just, you know, when it's done well, brings you to another place. And it's designed to do that. But the thing with it is it's designed in a comprehensive, holistic sense, meaning that it's, it does seek to invoke that because that is the purpose of music, but for the purpose of bringing the whole person, body, soul, spirit to God, which does include the emotions, but not sure. just exclusively the emotions in a disincarnate sense and not exclusively the emotions in a rationalistic sense. Right. Yeah. Because here's the other thing is I just want to touch on this, like that whole thing of like attention, like, you know, we've talked about this before kind of and people who have um, the few people who have gone through like my emotions class, whatever, but this thing I've talked about in regards of thinking and seeing emotions as angels either fallen or holy one way or the other. But the, the thing is, holy ain't God. God has, there are emotions. God's given us emotions for a purpose, but because of the fall, the potential for them to be fallen is very high. And most yeah. people's emotions are fallen. So they need to be redeemed and emotions as messengers, angel and yellow means messenger. Emotions will lead you. They're designed to lead us to um, understanding and experiences in the worship of God, sure. and for the, you know, the purification and, and the and the the preparation of the human person for you know union with God. Um, but also, what it can do is it can become a very um, self centered experience where the emotion wants to be worshipped. And that's, that's where the demons will will manipulate us to invoke emotional responses. That's why, you know, emotion dis- emotional disorders are on the rise and these things like true. that. It isn't because we're becoming more aware of them. No, it's increasing because yeah. the ability to have emotions um, integrated in the person in a healthy way are decreasing because society is in such a mess. So whether it's on a pharmacological level, on a psychological level, you know, on a sociological level, what I mean by that. On a rela- on a interpersonal relationship. Yeah, that's level. what I mean well, by codependence, a right? Codependence is right. that. That's what I mean by sociological level. It's like the relational, interrelational aspect of it, but also too, you know, the the moral level in regards of like what is the social ethic of of, of a people, a community. All those things is so broken and so bad. That, you know, great example, right? I mean, it's part of the way we're talking about this today, too. Like, Black youths, right? Like, it's it's a problem. It's an epidemic. And people, thank you, St. Moses. Um, they, uh, 
Is he knocking and he knocked, something? yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, that was that was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> the um, receipts. <laughs> so so he so the it's 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 an issue. It's it's a problem and people know it. And um, you know, on the one hand, you know, people who are outside the black community may or may not be, depending on how private the conversation is and depending how like quote unquote bold they are, you know, are scared to say anything because you don't want to be called a racist, right? And so like that's the thing. But on the other end, you know, the reality of the um just demonic influence and nature of what's happening when it's growing the this this phenomena of communities and people being possessed and like what that looks like. It's taking its shape in in black youth and those who are influenced by that that culture which is a particular thing right the um explicit violence and lust and degeneracy that's an explicit thing right and it's you see how it opens and makes people susceptible through their emotions right being manipulated through emotions and so what's a characteristic of like black people now what's like like oh just being so emotionally sensitive, the slightest thing, losing their minds, getting crazy, like the ratchet stuff, like that all, we've, I've talked about this before, that all comes from a lack of, the, the low level issue is a lack of emotional regulation, but it, that's the gateway to a deeper spiritual thing. But it's happening in other communities, but the violence and the ratchetness just isn't the manifestation because the what would the word be the kind of soy boy the emasculation moving into the the growth and sympathy of we were talking about like one in four high school kids are identifying you know with the alphabet you know um agenda yeah i read that stat Which, recently and that was one insane in four, one in four i don't i mean if you, if you stop and think one in four that's an insane number but the brother father, father i think it's got to be mostly f- female it's got to be mostly girls okay i got it uh, okay. I, gotta I don't think okay. so well, hold on i would just say this let me just finish this but the brother brought up a point said those who have acted out on it are still in that low sub you know sub articulated you know number of people that barely registers but the thing is is i was saying the answer my response to that though was the potential now for those people to kind of be moving out of that realm of just, you know, the vainglory of trying to find an identity with being an oppressed group or whatever that means, the power of the victim, it moves into something else, namely potentiality, because the potentiality now to act that out is growing. Well, and because there's a praxis, because the identity is based upon an act. There's an identity yeah. and a praxis to it, and it isn't just females, because what it's doing is it's also changing the way that men engage with females it's changed the way that white males like because the thing is like okay black males like you don't see us you don't see that behavior and it's more dangerous sure but what's happened what i'm trying to get at is you're seeing just this possession happening in mass in different communities in different ways but it's still something's happening i brought the let me just say this so everyone's like what are you talking about japan and the suicide forest Mm. Japan and the crazy degenerate like the reason why people don't see it is because for the Japanese and what you know some people might you know crudely just lump Asians together like Asian community whatever you know what I mean it's a bit crude but like someone could say you don't see that behavior with Asians like you see with black youth and really you just see it with American black youth not with like Nigerians or whatever but that's a whole other thing that we've talked about but this thing is like what I'm trying to get at is you're seeing it everywhere as just taking on different shapes. Like men are no longer knowing how to interact with a woman. They don't know how to talk to a woman. They don't know how to engage with the woman. And that is brought to the extreme in like Japan, right? Why are their birth numbers dropping? It's, it isn't just because of like, you know, like the brother was saying earlier this morning, it's like, it's not like in, in China where it's just like a matter of numbers, right? Because of their, social of their um a cultural revolution which led them to like basically shoot themselves in the foot by their murder of you know um 
murdering girls versus boys, right? Like they shot themselves in the foot. It's not just that in Japan, it's the the deviancy and the uh, and there's other aspects to it. I I know we have a very informed audience, and I'll, I'll welcome someone saying, "Well, actually, <laughs> it's it, it, but sure. you get what I'm saying in the sense of." There are these well they're they're choosing forgive me father it's just in in Japan they're just choosing the youth are choosing we're not going to do it we're not going to even have relationships never correct. mind kids they're like correct. i'm not even going to have relationships correct correct so my point is the emotional ma- manipulation which is getting back to the chaos gpt the emotional manipulation is happening but it just it looks different in different communities and in different but it's worldwide right I was talking with uh, one of the nuns today. She's sharing about this thing that she was watching where this woman couldn't even, she was a woman athlete, I think it was, in New Zealand. She couldn't even get to the podium to make her uh, speech about why she was struggling with um, transgender men being admitted to women's events because she got mobbed by transgender men, women, whatever they are, like men being women. And she and she was like, "This is it was insane because these are men dressed in dresses, whatever, but they're pummeling this woman, like yeah. security, right?" So like, it isn't. It, it's happening everywhere, and it's in a different level. Just like if you have a, a community, you'll have someone. Everyone's passions are different, right? That the, but nevertheless, the devil isn't just hitting everyone with lust. He hits some people with vainglory, some people with pride, some people with. You know what I'm saying? So that reality, that's what we're dealing with on a really large level in regards of segments of society or communities being subjugated to a very kind of large social level of possession. And its gateway is through primarily the emotional uh, interface, right? That's how it's that's how it's that's how it's hooking people that's father father cosmos yeah no father cosmos cosmos talks about every time they went they want to change something hollywood starts making very emotional movies so uh, Mm -hmm. there was one about in the 70s late 60s early 70s right before roe v wade all these movies start coming out but these poor women you know they were pregnant Mm -hmm. and they had nothing so the Mm -hmm. boyfriend ends up doing something and the woman dies from it and Oh man! Suddenly, that's everyone's. Well, the heartstrings, man. That and they put them nice music. It's like yeah. a master's class on emotional manipulation. And that's so funny. I was we were there. The kids were watching. Uh, was it Attack of the Clones? Before I left, and I I left right at the scene where um, Palpatine is talking to Anakin after he's been given the assignment to watch Padme, and it just hit me, and I was like, oh, and it was good because it was from an earlier conversation we were talking about really taking those stories and trying to instruct our kids. But I was like, man, Palpatine's such the devil because he's like, Anakin, you're truly the greatest Jedi I've ever seen. And like, he's, he's puffing him up, puffing up. And this is what hit me. He says to him, he says, you'll learn one day to trust your feelings, Anakin. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. there you are. So I had to give a little bit of like a five minute talk to my kids before I left to come here or whatever. But I was like, see that right there? That's the devil. Yeah, trust your feelings, Anakin. You know what I mean? Just one hundred percent. And <clears throat> yeah, I mean, oh, I don't want to go too far down that. Rise of Skywalker, he ends up becoming incarnate through technology again. I'm just what? saying, Palpatine does. So that that really dramatic That's, scene of the giant yeah, yeah. crane holding up his body and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, so actually, this has been excellent, but um. Uh, there was one. There's a couple really quick ones. I felt bad because they've been waiting a little while. Um, Father, is it forbidden to work on Sunday? They work evenings at a job and they take communion uh, that morning. Is it like is it discouraged or forbidden that they should not go to work? Uh, like, it was real, real short. It's discouraged. Talk with your priest. But we really should not work on fe- major feast days. Um these days you know we shouldn't work on sunday um and by work you mean going to work i mean you should do something after taking communion yeah, right yeah yeah like don't go just go home and watch netflix or something yeah like, you can can you work in the garden can you fix yeah your i would sink? say like like for me people have asked that i go like 
you know, working in the garden, creative work, you know, like painting, like these are things that I, that are blessed, you know, but like, you know, cause all those can facilitate further communion with God and, and connection, you know, but like, mm. you know, going to your occupation. Cause like, whatever, it's like, if you have to, God knows, because, you know, the ancient Christians, they would often have to do that too as well. Mm. But if you are in a place, I would just say this, I won't, I don't want to say forbidden. I'll just say, if you're in a place to where you could get those days off and spend those days, <laughs> you know, in prayer. And I don't just mean like standing in your corner all day long, but again, you know, man, if here's a wonderful day, you have, you know, liturgy with your family, Holy communion, you have, you know, agape meal with your parish community, you go home and you're in the garden with your family, you know, work in the garden, enjoying each other, having iced tea. I mean, it sounds like the lake, but like it is, right? And it's like, a beautiful day. It's, it's that's wonderful. a beautiful day that honors God, right? Yeah. You know, and like singing songs together. That's that's not cheesy. It's beautiful. You yeah. know, so like that's a great way of. So, anyways, not forbidden. Talk it's, to your priest and really trying to keep that day holy, which is mean giving it over to God. But I mean, imagine how pleasing that is to God to have your kids running around your yards, like yelling Christ has risen to each yeah. other. Like that's, it doesn't just, it does. I would weep when I was 23 and knew that one day that would be my life. I would be like, it's going to be that good. I'd be like, it's going to be that good eventually. So um, this person also asked, they were baptized into church um, this previous Lazarus Saturday by pouring, pouring water on top. Is this something I need to worry about? You know, God bless you. Um, you know, in Africa, there's places where they don't have water, you know, and uh, they, they've they had to make do by pouring because they've, they've had like nothing, you know, that, that, that's, that's what they've had, you know. Uh, but, you know, um, it is what it is. And, you know, I just want to encourage you. God is not looking to like strike you down because, you know, you didn't get a triple immersion, you know, full immersion. Um, and so for you right now to give thanks to God that you're in the church, to honor your priest or honor, honor the priesthood, you know what I mean? And and show obedience in that sense will be pleasing to God and whatever is lacking that humility and that obedience and, and not being tempted to become um, discontent with the overcorrectness that will be more pleasing to God and make up whatever might be lacking in the, uh, in, in the, in, in the porn, in, 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 in the, in the right. Sure. Okay? So, um, so uh last one um there is actually a fair amount of still really good questions that would be another half hour hour long discussion so i think maybe we'll talk about it off air about maybe doing another episode next uh or another q a where is okay right here so um father lustful dreams dreams in which you're you know attacked at night um mm -hmm. so uh from what I understand, it's a rite of purity afterwards. Um, well, that's what I prescribe personally. Okay, there's a pastoral thing there, and that that is there. I mean, there's that 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 is there. But what's the question? So it's what's up with them? What's up with lustful dreams? You so know? lustful dreams come because of the impurity of our own hearts, um, but they also come as a uh, attack by the evil one. Um, they also come from traveling. And what I mean by traveling is, you know, in the in the waking hours, your soul's traveling. Oh, okay. right? you're, you're perceiving things, taking things in. And so depending on your disposition, how you're taking them in, it can influence your inner state. And unless you're being vigilant, you can become susceptible and vulnerable to those things being, you know, um, provoked. Um externally meaning from demonic influence or even just your own kind of like disposition. So um, it can be a combination of all three or one kind of on its own. Um, but ultimately the way to deal with it is, you know, prayer, 
and um, searching yourself. You know, if if you're pre if you're plagued with it, you know, confession. If it's something that you're constantly plagued with, because everyone gets assaulted with it every once in a while, right? But like, if you're plagued by um, confession, um, getting advice from your spiritual father or your confessing priest, and then I would say, you know, um, being attentive to the church fasts, you know, and being more fasting attentive to your fast. One. Yeah, fasting, the fasting is know, a big one. Um, and and praying at night. So in other words. You're spending enough time at night before you go to bed to where you are just kind of like rattling off some prayers, but you're actually doing a counting of a conscience, a kind of like inventory of conscience before you're going to sleep, offering prayers to God, asking God's mercy, asking God to purify and to prove you. Um, and, and that combination of things in time will alleviate if you're being chronically, um, you know, kind of attacked or something. I I, as a lay person, I run to St. Mary of Egypt quite a bit. Um, like we're supposed to, you know, say, oh, uh, at night, you're supposed to make the sign of the cross over the bed. And I always ask St. Mary personally. That's just what I do. I run to her quite a bit. To... The other thing, though, I do want to add is, you know, the thing with lust is lust. You can often be provoked by lust because of your pride and particularly your judgments of others. So if you if. If you're like this person, like, I don't even like sexual stuff and blah, blah, blah. It's like, but I'm still assaulted with less. It's like, are you judgmental? They're, oh, yeah. Well, because a person who has a judgmental disposition and isn't catching it, isn't struggling against it, that can warrant lustful assault as a chastisement. So, yeah. So, and then second part of this person's question, then we'll wrap there. There are multiple parishes in my area. One on the old and one on the new calendar. Would it be advisable to attend both services when possible? For example, I have the opportunity to attend the feast of Saints Peter and Paul on June 29th and July uh, 12th at different parishes. Should I attend both? Like celebrating the same event on if two different calendars. If you want to. If you want to. I mean, yeah. if you want to. I could see where it's like you have, you know, uh, relationship with both communities that's great you know what i mean but it's not like it's not like double dipping <laughs> i mean it is anytime you get to church is great but it's not you know so. yeah okay well gentlemen uh i think that'll be it for now um so okay so yeah um how do we wrap the show up i can't okay so Okay, feel free contact, to contact email. Contact at royalpath.network. We have uh, a very kind person who has decided to take on that responsibility of correspondence. Thank you for taking it from me because it has been proven tonight. I am not good at it. But what I wanted to say also was the people who I am corresponding with, and there's a couple of you that we've sent emails, I'll, I'm still going to be in contact. Like you can still email Andrew at Royal Path if you want to talk to me specifically. I don't know why you would want to talk unless it's about Star Wars or the Beastie Boys or something like that, which is great. I'll talk about that stuff all day long. Um, also, anytime we mention a musical artist or something, I put it on a Spotify playlist called Royal Path uh, Podcast Playlist or something. This week, I'm going to go back and listen to that one episode where we talked about punk rock like the whole time mm -hmm. and find every single band and put them on the playlist and then uh, that will be pretty much caught up except for the stuff we mentioned tonight um I believe that there is some uh, a couple questions about donating to mount tabor father do you know if crypto is accepted for mount tabor donations mm, we could arrange it for sure okay okay yeah there's been a couple people have reached out who wanted to donate to mount tabor the school god bless that you is affiliated with uh saint mary's um it's a, a mount tabor school of um oh, liberal education something like that i can't remember please look it up Please look it up. yeah um and uh oh we have a merch store royalpath.store we don't see any of that money two-thirds of it goes to our uh parish and then the other third goes to the person who makes the merchandise so i think that's it Thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye.